In the previous episode, Lin and Mo Yun made their way into the divinity secret realm. After a grueling climb to the very top, he not only managed to max out his divinity, he somehow snagged the cauldron too. But just as he was about to lay back and grind some levels, he stumbled upon a small squad, completely surrounded by abyssal demons. That's when he spotted his sister. Let's get back to the story. Seeing his sister in danger, Lin couldn't help but yell out to her from the distance. Then, without thinking twice, he sprinted toward her, running so fast he practically left a dust trail behind him. Mohan's face turned pale the moment she heard his voice. Her teammates also looked in that direction, all looking confused. But Mohan herself was much more concerned, and even though she had no clue why Lin was here, one thing was clear as she did not want him getting involved in this mess. But it was already too late. The demons had already turned toward the sound, sneering as they spotted him. Well, well, what do we have here? A level 31 rookie? Seriously? They laughed while taunting. Perhaps to them, Lin was a nobody as one demon questioned. Are humans really this desperate, sending such weaklings to fight us? Hold on a second. Don't these demons have any sort of communication system between them? How many of their buddies have Lin taken down already? Have they seriously not heard of him by now? Oh well. Let's get back to the story. A few of the demons decided to have some fun, so they rushed straight at Lin. Damn it! Mohan's heart pounded with fear. She shouted, and in a flash, her body burst with radiant light. There was no hesitation at all. Within a split second, she activated her skill. The sky filled with swords, hovering in midair like a deadly swarm. With a sharp command, she pointed toward the demons, and this was her most powerful skill— the dance of the ten thousand swords. The sword zoomed forward, faster than the demons could react. In an instant, most of them were pierced through, falling one by one like ragdolls. Mohan didn't waste a second. She dashed toward Lin, while the knight and her party saw the opportunity and led the group in a breakaway. Within moments, they'd cut through the enemy forces and regrouped around Lin, forming a circle around him. Mohan turned to Lin, wondering why he was here. When Lin explained that it was his teacher who sent him here for some training, the knight, who Lin had only met once before, couldn't help but shake his head. He thought Lin's teacher must have nerves of steel since he believed that sending Lin to the eternal trial ground at level 31 was a crazy move. The knight isn't in the best mood, since Lin's sudden appearance had thrown off his whole plan, and to make things worse, Mohan's skills were now on cooldown. Things were about to get tricky. Lin didn't pay the knight any attention. Instead, he turned to his sister, asking if they were waiting for the dungeon to spawn. Mohan nodded. That was their plan, however. Right now, getting inside was going to be really tough. She glanced toward the distance, where the entrance to the dungeon was now occupied by several abyssal demons. The knight cut in, shaking his head, telling them just forget the dungeon for now, and they need to break through their line and get the hell out of here. And for the dungeon... That's for a later time. Mohan nodded and pulled out a teleportation stone, handing it to Lin, saying if they don't make it out, Lin can use this and get him to a safe spot. The knight, however, knew this was her only one, but Lin didn't take it. He just smiled and tells her that he didn't need it. Mohan looked flustered. Tells Lin that this isn't the time to be stubborn. He shouldn't be worrying about her since she still got a teleportation scroll. It's not as good as a stone, but it'll do the job and she will be fine. But it was pretty clear Mohan didn't quite get what Lin meant. What he was really trying to say was, they don't need to run. They just need to kill all these demons. Simple, right? The others stared at him, a mix of surprise and confusion on their faces. When Lin stepped ahead of the night, the guy finally snapped out of it. Kid, do you even know what you're talking about? He asked, believing that Lin should listen to his sister. In his mind, Lin was just some level 31 rookie, barely out of his training wheels. The demons seemed to agree because a few of them burst out laughing. One even sneered, wondering if Lin had just woken up, even saying Lin should come take a nap in their bellies instead. Lin ignored them, not even bothering to glance their way. Instead, he turned to Mo Han and her team. Watch out, all right? I don't want to accidentally hit any of you. But to be safe, they should invite him to the party first. With that, he joined their party. And as soon as the system notification appeared, Mohan gave the order for everyone to fall back. Unlike the others, Mohan trusted her brother, no questions asked. The knight opened his mouth, probably to argue again. But in the end, he stayed quiet and did as Mohan said. One second later, 
Countless red shackles appeared out of nowhere, snapping around the demons floating in the air. They were still grinning a moment ago, but now they were bound, unable to move, and completely caught off guard. Before they even realized what had happened, the undead general began rising up from the ground, and right behind him came Lin's legion of the skeleton army. The skeletal warriors charged forward, gaining momentum before launching themselves into the air. The demons hadn't figured out why their movements had suddenly slowed to a crawl, but some of them were starting to panic. Run! One of them shouted. But we all know, it was too late, and they were done goofed. In the next instant, the skeletons yanked the demons out of the sky, one by one. The demons hadn't even had time to process what was happening before the skeletal warriors swung their great swords, delivering rampage strikes, and began chopping them up. As the skeletal warriors went about their business, Lin calmly raised his hand, casting soul flame. The demons that hadn't been yanked out of the sky were now staring down in pure terror, watching their comrades get shredded below. They tried to flee, but under the slow curse, it was like they were nailed in place. They flapped their wings desperately, but it was useless. A moment later, Lin's soul flame engulfed them, and their screams echoed through the battlefield as they tumbled to the ground, one after another. Mohan stood frozen, her eyes wide in disbelief. The sword she had been holding slipped from her grasp and stabbed into the ground. Her teammates were no better off, staring at the scene like they'd just seen a ghost. These were powerful demons. Weren't they supposed to be tough to kill? And this, this level 31 kid just wiped them out like it was nothing? What kind of joke is this? One of them rubbed his eyes, half convinced he was dreaming. They had always thought Mohan was a monster in battle. But it turned out her little brother might be even more terrifying. What the hell is going on with this family? After clearing out the demons, Lin turned around slowly, recalling his skeletons with a simple gesture. All done, he said casually, as if it had been just another day. Well, we all know, our boy always loves some free experiences. To him, perhaps the biggest enemy is not the demons nor the dragons, but his own experience bar. Anyway, Mohan blinked a few times taking a second to process everything before breaking into a smile. She gave Lin a big thumbs up. Awesome job, little bro. Then she turned to introduce Lin to the group, all of whom were still recovering from the shock. Turned out that these guys were her seniors from the academy, as well as her teammates. She then introduced them one by one. Lin nodded politely as she introduced them. Then the knight stepped forward. He turned out to be the team captain, Gu Changfeng, a level 52 legendary profession holy sword knight. Gone was the arrogant look he'd had before. He put away his weapon, and with genuine respect, thanked Lin. Captain Gu said it with such sincerity, clearly no longer sees Lin as a rookie. Lin just waved it off, smiling slightly, saying killing demons is part of the job for any human professional. But Lin couldn't help his curiosity, as he wanted to know why his sister's team was so set on getting into this dungeon anyway. Mohan quickly explained that her teacher predicted that a primordial rune would appear in this dungeon under the starlight. That's why they are here, and the team is here to help her get the rune. Lin nodded, but was also a bit surprised, since there were people who could track the exact location of the primordial rune. But at the thought of it, it makes sense now. But then Mohan glanced around, a little concerned, believed the battle just now made a lot of noise. She bet more demons. Maybe even some dragons are already on their way here. Lin clearly didn't see it that way. And he tells them, If there's really a primordial rune in there, don't sweat it. You guys go ahead into the dungeon and I'll stay out here. With me around, no one's going to bother you. He flashed a confident smile. Not long after, they all heard a faint sound, followed by a whirlwind kicked up around them. Up ahead, a swirling vortex slowly began to form. They knew it wouldn't be long before others noticed. Demons, dragons, you name it. But for now, they had the advantage. The dungeon entrance was taking shape, and Mohan, along with her team, quickly stepped inside. Lin gave the dungeon info a quick glance and found out it was called Blood Source. Lovely name, right? Mohan looked back at him, clearly still a bit worried. But she knew the best they could do was clear the dungeon as fast as possible and meet back here. Lin didn't follow them in, though. Instead, he hung back, guarding the entrance, something he had always wanted to try out acting like a world boss for once. But only this one was a lot more deadly. Sitting on a rock, he couldn't help but feel mused. Back in the day, he encountered the Dynasty Guild blocking dungeon entrances, and he wasn't very fond of the idea back then. And here he was, 
doing the same. Life has a funny way of flipping the script on you. Meanwhile, the dragons and demons had picked up on the eternal trial ground energy pooling in the central area. Judging by the strength of it, they could tell this wasn't your average dungeon. Sure enough, before long, a group of dragon professionals paid a visit. Lin noticed them spot the entrance, and then they saw Lin just chilling there like he owned the place. To them, he was just some level 31 nobody. They probably thought they could squish him with one finger. Clearly, the dragons need to work on their communications. Anyone would assume by now, at least some of Lin's reputation and stories would reach their ears. But clearly, that's not the case. Lin looked up at them, slowly summoning a few skeletons as he grinned. Finally, you guys made it here. One of their mages raised his staff, starting to cast some spell, clearly not taking Lin and his skeletons seriously. Then, boom, a giant meteor came crashing down. He didn't even bother looking up, but the dragon mage gave a smug grin. Typical weaklings, he muttered, probably thinking he crushed Lin to pieces. But as the dust cleared, a bunch of giant red shackles shot out, wrapping around them. Well, flying enemies have always been a pain in the butt for our boy, but once you get them to the ground, it's fair game. The poor dragon mage didn't even have time to react before two bone spikes skewered him. What the hell just happened? The remaining dragon yelled, panic spreading fast. They tried to fly higher, but it was already too late. Their mage, the one who just got killed, in an instant, turned out to be their doom. Lin used corpse explosion on his body, and in the blink of an eye the whole squad was wiped out. He casually ordered his skeletons to drag their bodies back and stash them behind the rocks. Gotta keep things tidy, right? Watching the skeletons haul the bodies away, he couldn't help but find this to be quite entertaining. Playing weak and then springing a trap on them was surprisingly fun. End of the day, it's free experience and merits, so you gotta do what you gotta do. As we rewind to a few minutes earlier, the demons had picked up on the energy as well. And like the dragons, they rushed over and spotted Lin, the humble level 31 easy target. They probably thought they'd hit the jackpot. Not only had they found the dungeon entrance, but a little appetizer in the form of Lin. But, well, reality had other plans. As soon as they got close, he used the same trick. This time, it was even easier. He had one of his skeletons toss the dead dragon professional's body high into the air. Right on cue, he set off another corpse explosion. And before the demons even realized what hit them, they were nothing but charred remains. The skeletons, as relaxed as ever, dragged their bodies over and stacked them with the others behind the rocks. Time kept ticking by, and soon he had quite the collection of bodies piling up. In fact, it was getting a little ridiculous. The mound was now taller than the rock hiding them. If any of the demons or dragons saw this gruesome display, they probably wouldn't get any closer. And if they don't come, how am he supposed to rack up experiences and merits? Our boy gotta think ahead. Just then, he heard footsteps. This time, it was a party of human professionals approaching. Naturally, he didn't attack them. However, he raised a hand and told them to stop, letting them know the dungeon was off limits for now. Their leader wasn't too happy, though. He glanced at Lin, probably thinking, What's this little level 31 guy doing blocking the entrance? He tried to sound friendly but firm, saying, Hey, brother, it's not cool to block the entrance like this. However, Lin simply nodded and tells the man that he got it. But still, the dungeon was off-limit for everyone right now. The guy opened his mouth to argue, but one of his teammates tugged on his sleeve, gulping nervously, pointing behind the rocks and tells him that he might want to check behind the rock. The guy, probably the leader of this party, turned to look and soon found himself completely stunned. His face went pale. Behind the rock was a pile of corpses, all abyssal demons and dragons, all stacked up like firewood. Just then, the sky filled with the sound of rushing wind as another dragon squad swooped in. They didn't attack the humans standing in their way, but instead just shoved them aside, clearly not wanting to waste time. Moments later, a group of demons showed up because, of course, it wasn't a party until everyone crashed it. Lin's trusty little skeletons, who had completely mastered the art of throwing corpses, lobbed two bodies toward them. And just like that, with another boom, followed by another loud explosion, both squads were wiped out in an instant. The skeletons, by now total experts at this, dragged their new collection of bodies back behind the rock, adding to the ever-growing pile. Lin glanced over at the party again and repeated himself, saying he was serious. They really couldn't go in right now. 
This time, the guy who had been all tough a moment ago looked like he was standing at attention. He shivered, and in a much weaker voice stammered, Yes, boss, whatever you say. The rest of his crew quickly fell in line, forming an orderly queue. Their leader respectfully added, We'll just... Wait here. You just say the word when we can head in. Not long after, a beam of red light shot out from the dungeon, straight into the sky. That was the primordial rune. At the same time, Mohan and her squad emerged from the dungeon. Lin congratulated her, and she gave him a slightly worried look. She asked if Lin ran into any demons or dragons while they were in there. Lin just shrugged while replying nonchalantly, saying just a few, but it's all taken care of. Honestly, though, he was a little worried about whether Mo Han could successfully fuse the rune in the next ten days, but she reassured him, patting him on the shoulder, explained that her teacher had already got everything set up. There won't be any danger. Just then, the rest of her team let out a collective gasp. They were staring at the pile of bodies behind the rock, eyes wide with disbelief. Didn't he say there were a few demons and dragons? One of them muttered. That's what you call a few? They exclaimed.